owner of the AWF, Call Superstar, 11 time tag team champion of the world. This egotistical bastard is ready to shoot the shit as Sean Walsh presents The Sean Walsh Show, where there is no holds barred. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sean Walsh Show. This is Sean Walsh, of course. And I am just very, very happy with the result of episode one of the Sean Walsh Show. I had Lester Barkley, a.k.a. Sonny, on the show. I thought that went very, very well. Uh, and I think many of you at home also agree that that went well. A lot of people were very happy with what Sonny had to say, whether it be they agreed or because they were just glad that he expressed his opinion. And I also encourage that with anyone, not just Sonny, but anyone. You have an opinion on something. You, having an opinion is not hating on someone. Just because... Not everyone will agree with it. Doesn't mean you should just keep quiet because someone might get mad. People might get mad, but as long as you present it in a way that you're just saying you just don't like this, and you present why, and you present maybe something that should have been done without bashing the person personally, it's not hate. It's constructive criticism, which is exactly what Sonny did. And I, and I know Travis Sparks, the owner of COH, agrees with that, and. We're going to find out more about that as today I have Travis on the show. Travis messaged me after the interview with Sonny went up and he was like, hey, I li- I'm listening to your podcast and I want in. And I was like, yeah, I can't think of a better guy to have on next. So in a little bit, we're going to have Travis on. He's going to respond to some of the things Sonny said. He's going to talk about Ultimate Glory. He's going to talk about some of the concerns that all of you at home have. And uh, we're going to get some answers, some interesting stories too from Travis. So a fun interview. It's not just, oh, let me just defend this. It's a really fun interview. You get to find out all these things. It's a great interview. You're all going to love it. I do want to get into one thing here that just because I've had Lester on on the first episode and just because I'm having Travis on for the second episode, by any means, is this a COH podcast? This is a call podcast. Meaning we could talk about anything and everything. We're not just going to be talking about COH. I know the last interview is very heavily COH and the Travis interview that's going to be coming up is going to be very heavy COH. However, I love call wrestling. I'm not just in Call of Honor. I'm in many other call shows. I'm on, I'm in, obviously I've had the AWF. I'm in uh, ECF. I'm in DZW, FTC. I've been in other call shows before like VCW, CWS. I've been in all these other places. I watch other call shows. I'm not here just to talk about COH. I'm here to talk about other shows, which I'm going to on future episodes because I have already recorded some future interviews for upcoming podcasts. I've recorded interviews with people like Kenyon Phoenix, with Ryan Carroll, with uh, Daniel Mars. I've recorded interviews for future podcasts. And I know that runs in the whole thing. Oh, we might talk about some things that are outdated, like such as Ultimate Glory, depending on when Ultimate Glory is uploaded onto YouTube. I don't care, though. I want these interviews recorded in advance, because I record these interviews in advance, because what if one week I don't have time to record it? Well, now I already have it ready. All I have to do is slap it on there, go put some pictures on the screen, and boom, done. Like, And the only part that I do right before it goes up is this part right here. Like, I'm recording this. Uh, f- it's right now Friday night. This is going to be going up to, uh, tomorrow on Saturday, obviously, to get to current and recent events, like the build to Ultimate Glory 4. And I'm, what I'm talking about is not Battlegrounds or Slams, but I'm talking about the COH year-end or should I say season end awards which are on the COH Facebook page if you're not on the COH Facebook page first of all I encourage you to go join the page it's really really fun and also when if you are on there go and go vote for the COH awards every day a new award is going up whether it be Superstar of the Year CBV of the Year uh, whatever the of, of the year award and there's also Rookie of the Year award, which has caused a bit of controversy, especially on my part. So I'm going to address that right now. If you're on the COH page, you know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. 
Rookie of the Year. Who are the first people to come to mind? And those people are the people who are going to be on for nominees. Those being Fisk, Nitro, Stefan Guerrero, Dave Rivera, Tommy Moonshine. All these cats there on the award. And there were some good rookies that came out of this year. However, if you ask me, and a lot of the people that within COH, like the roster of COH, I will agree that there are two people who truly deserve this award, and that being Fisk and Nitro. However, Fisk and Nitro, neither neither guy is first place. That first place guy is Stefan Guerrero. Now, before I get into this, I'm going to say state this right now. I do not hate Stefan Guerrero. I have no problem with him as a person. He's a good guy, and with what was said, he took things very well, and I give him respect for that. Also, I by no means am jealous of Stefan Guerrero. I can give a rat's ass if he's feeding with Justin Bateman, and I'm not. I can care less. I'm more happy in my spot than I would be with uh, with something else that would come about. I'm happy being the best. Actually, no, not even just the best. The tag team division with Ryan Carroll and Jay Crack compared to someone who is feuding with one of the best. Not one of the best himself. Feuding with one of the best. And the only reason he is is because th- that guy, Justin Bateman, is such a nice guy who decided to, to help out some of the younger guys. And also because the guy he wanted to put over first, Nathan Roberts, didn't pan out too well. So, Safan Guerrero is the backup plan. And that's not that's not a, that's not a bash. That's not a way to hate on. That's just a reality. Stefan Guerrero is the backup plan for Nathan Roberts because Nathan Roberts' plans went south. So they went forth with Stefan. Let me tell you a story about Stefan Guerrero. For all the people that say, "Oh, obviously Stefan Guerrero, it, he he deserves it." If he didn't, he would have he would he wouldn't have been fuming with, with Bateman and gotten all this stuff. He's ready and all this shit, which by the way, he isn't ready. He was the first guy to get called up from Slam and I and that's some big old bullshit right there. Nitro and Fist, two of the two of the guys that brought people to Slam, the one actually wanna watch Slam. And when they left Slam, it always, it took some damage. Two guys that you could argue even really didn't even need Slam, but they benefited because of it. And now look at them. Pride champion, internet champion. Stefan Guerrero, though, was, was in Slam for a cup of coffee. Should have been there longer. If, if he was in Slam longer, maybe I wouldn't have had such an issue with it. But let, let me get back to the main point. Let me tell you about something about Stefan Guerrero. Got called up to, got called up to uh, Battleground. Ha- started a little program with Justin Bateman. Little uh, exchange. And we, there was a whole thing going on with ta- tag team matches and whatnot in the build to Ready to Rumble as me and Carol were feuding with AJ and and Caleb. And there was a six-man tag team match because Justin Bateman decided to get involved. No promise it whatsoever. Ba- it was cool. Ba- me, us and Bateman have a bit of a history because of that one episode of COH where he kicked the shit out of us because of what Immaculacy did and it's always been a running joke with us that he never paid our hospital bills and stuff like that and Bateman likes doing exchanges with us because it's entertaining it's funny it's all that kinds of stuff it was great it seemed like he he really wanted to work with with us and you know we we would be cool but we got a match on uh on episode of Battleground and we me and Carol we teamed up with Stefan Guerrero and and shit and because so, I if you remember Stefan Guerrero was teaming up with us I I can't remember if he teamed us like once or twice or whatever it was and it was described as just a a deal of money however there's some inside inside scooped into that story there's a reason why Stefan Guerrero was that guy that's because beforehand we were getting message me and Carol both to bring Stefan Guerrero in as a third egotistical bastard because me and Carol both wanted Fisk to be 
an egotistical bastard. We thought he fit us. We thought he'd be better, and we actually liked Fisk. No, okay, let me f- rephrase that, because we, we don't hate Stefan Gro. We liked the Fisk gimmick, and we wanted him with us. It made sense. We were ba- practically hinting at it on the page. I call him the Fisk and Bastard, for Christ's sakes, but... Travis kept saying he wanted. He's like, "Oh, come on, give this guy Stefan Guerrero." And we, literally, when Travis told us about that before that before that whole match and everything, neither one of us knew who he was. We knew who Fisk and Nitro were. We didn't know who Stefan Guerrero was. And we kept telling him, "No, we don't want to be with Stefan Guerrero. We don't like his gimmick. We don't like his work. We did. We don't want to." So obviously, that didn't happen. He kept. Travis kept pushing though. He wanted he wanted us with Guerrero, but we kept saying no. Stefan Guerrero's egotistical bastard. <laughs> that really would not have worked. Thank God it went with we went with Jay later on. But shit, man. If if Travis was trying so hard to put him with us to help him, what what does that say? And Stefan Guerrero, this is this is not a bash. This is just a harsh reality. The Stefan Guerrero gimmick, all it is, is Kevin Steen without the great promos. His promos are mediocre at best. There's a reason why when I watch people like Fisk, when I watch people like Nitro, I don't skip over their promos. But I do skip over Stefan Guerrero's after listening a minute or two, and I just have enough. Because it is. And you know what? In time, maybe he'll get better. But that's the thing. In time. Well, I'm not looking at in time. I'm looking at what he's done now. And right now, he hasn't shown that. And obviously, the, a lot, most of the COH roster agrees. You go look at the people that voted for Fisk and Nitro. Go look at that. For predominantly Ultimate Nitro, you got Alex. You got Steve. You got Stu. You got me. You have Kenyon Phoenix. You got Carol. Oh, well, let's look at Fisk. There's AJ Young. There's Caleb Blair. Look at the people who voted for Stefan Gro. Okay, they got Kevin and Sonny. Okay. The rest, Corporate Kane. Fake account, by the way. And then you have some stupid little fuck named Seth Drago. Let me tell you something, Seth Drago. First of all, fuck you. Second of all, this fucker goes and comments on, on on the post. Don't even know who the hell he is. Still don't know who he is. Some guy, never heard of him in my life, goes and comments and starts insinuating that me or anyone else is jealous. Let me tell you something, Seth. None of us are jealous. We're just stating that in our opinion that Stefan Guerrero didn't deserve it over Nitro. Over Fisk. And you know what? If I had to choose between the two, I chose Nitro. And Nitro ultimately does... No pun intended. Does deserve it. Look at all this shit that Nitro's had to do. All this story, all this stuff. Nitro deserves to be Rookie of the Year. And if it's not Nitro, it's Fisk. But you want to give this to Fon But apparently, you know, I'm not allowed to bitch because Call is fake. Next time you you go in a... Tra- trash something in wrestling when you're mad at Roman Reigns is is main event in WrestleMania. Oh, re- wrestling's fake. The good example I use is like this. Many fans want it. Daniel Bryan or Dean Ambrose in the main event of WrestleMania, but we got Roman Reigns. Just like this award. We want an Ultimate Nitro. We want a fist, but we're getting Stefan Guerrero. Stephane Guerrero. But you know what? Enough of the ranting. When we come back, we're going to be sitting down with Travis Sparks. He's going to respond to Lester Barkley and all the critics regarding COH and Ultimate Glory 4. Multimedia Mania is running wild, brother, on the hottest new multimedia YouTube channel, Durga Burgers. The Durga Burgers offers the best forms of entertainment, including gameplays of WWE 2K15, NBA 2K15, Sonic, and the also entertaining Saboteur, which takes place during World War II, if you didn't know. We also have something for all you old gamers out there. We have Flashback Friday, where we go and play old school games. We also have podcasts on 
professional wrestling, television shows, and we didn't forget about you nerds out there, there is a comic book podcast called Different Panels. Durger Burgers is the destination for all forms of multimedia entertainment. Go to youtube.com slash Burgers and subscribe today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second episode of the Sean Wall Show. And boy, is this going to get interesting. The first one, we have Lester Barkley on, and we already created a ton of controversy, which is why today I'm having the COH owner, Travis Sparks, on to respond to Lester's comments on the previous episode. So welcome to uh, the Sean Wall Show, Travis. Howdy ho, Winslow! Uh, tr- well, Travis, I'm sure you got a lot to say regarding what what was said on the last episode. So, let's not wait any further. Let's dive right into these questions. Are we going to dive head first? Yeah, we might end up getting the concussion and kill our wife and kill Because I thought there was no diving allowed at the pool. Well, we have no we have no rules here. No holds barred. You can dive if you want. Just remember you can dive. Okay. All right. So, one of the thi- one of the biggest things that come out of the most recent episode of Battleground was the return of the Goonie. Ooh. Goonie, Goonie, Goonie's back after being gone for since anniversary. Back in black. And, back in black. And now Goonie has turned heel. He he came back, attacked Morris, cut a heel promo. And then, which caused Nate the Great to come out to the ring, send Goonie p- packing, and Morris got involved, and it's seemingly like there's going to be a triple threat of sorts at Ultimate Glory. However, not everyone is on on board and all like, yay, Goonie's back as a heel. Some people have been saying, including Lester and myself, that Goonie came back too soon, and his heel turn was rushed to get a spot at Ultimate Glory. Well, what's Ultimate Glory without the Goonie? Well, it it seems the Goonie should be someone who's on Ultimate Glory. However, with the with what happened to him after losing to M. Accuracy at Anniversary, he's not the same man. That he's not the same man. That's true. That's the story I'm trying to tell. He is not the same man. And is and and uh, I think AJ saw mentioned that that the uh, CWS tried to turn him heel and things didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, this heel turn is not long term; it's very short term. It's kind of like Sean and Hogan from uh, Summerfest in '05. Right, right. So uh, the main purpose of this storyline is it filler? Yes, every pay per view needs filler. It's actually going to be uh, spoiler alert. This is actually going to be the opening match for Ultimate Glory. Oh, really? Yeah, because um, all the other matches have some type of story leading into them, and this one really doesn't. So that's why we're going to kick off the show with this match, which will lead into the other stories later to come. Okay. But this story is just getting started for the whole Goonie thing. And, again, it hasn't been explained yet. That's the point. Like, why Nate came out, why he's, he went to attack Goonie, but Miss hit Paul, you know, and then everything just went all crazy. All that's going to be explained down the line. Uh, come really after Ultimate Glory. So, everybody, calm down. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. We just have to wait just, and see and let the story develop. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil too much on you know. Oh yeah, we don't want to give away too much. Let the viewers see it when it happens. That's, that's the reason why. The whole okay. But like I said, it's not long term. It is very short term. Because trust me. And Sunny made a point. Who's gonna boo Goonie? Nobody. Everybody loves Goonie. It's just that Goonie needs somebody to help him find his path again because, you know, his head's been all screwed up ever since Feud and him accessing the whole little girl incident happened. He hasn't been the same. That's the okay. story that's trying to be told, and it's going to progress as time goes on. All right. Uh, since we're on to U- Ultimate Glory matches, one question, a fan submitted question, being why Zane versus Patriot over possibly... Zane versus Alex, or Alex versus Patriot. Zane and Alex having that story that 
that could that seems like it should should have or could continue, and then Alex and Patriot having that story from building up months and months in that anniversary. So the question was, why didn't that? Why why didn't? I'm sorry. Repeat the question. Why why not? Why why isn't the main event Zane versus Alex or Alex versus Patriot instead of Zane versus Patriot? Well, again, well, it could well the main event could glory could go a few ways. I mean, the way I chose was uh, Patriot and Zane because, again, just like the other options you mentioned, there's history with Patriot and Zane going all the way back to 2002. They fought at Ultimate Glory 2 for a mid-card title. Now they're in the main event for the world title. And doing Alex and Zane could work too, and even doing Alex and Patriot. But uh, but like I mentioned, is you know, there's a few ways you can go. And the route I chose was Zane and Patriot because I wanted to have a new guy, a new star in the main event. And everybody loves when Patriot won the world title. I mean, I was I oh, was yeah. surprised by the feedback I got. And I and I even said to myself, "Oh boy, how the hell am I going to top this for Ultimate Glory?" Because to be honest, I, I did not expect that feedback. Uh, it was it was a hell of a moment. A lot of people are really big fans of when Patriot won the title. Now. Since, I hope I answered your question, by the way. Oh, you, you did, you did. Uh, with P- Patriot, it seems a good time to ask this question. Another fan submitted question. The man uh, behind the gimmick, Steve. What gimmick? Uh, the question being, uh, why does Steve have uh, so many characters in the COH, with two of them being main event superstars? Do you think possibly that e- could be too much of Steve? You, you think it's all right? or? Well, first of all, there's no proof that Steve is the Patriot. Steve is an accuracy. Yes. Steve is Steve Nemesis of uh, YWF. Steve is Monoxide. Yes. But there is no... Patriot is a completely different guy. Same with Gluteus. They were in the same promo together for crying out loud. So I don't understand why people keep getting this theory that, oh, uh, uh, Amacracy, Patriot, uh, uh, Gluteus, uh, Kristen, they're all the same. No, they're not. They're all different people. Is Sean Walsh and Ryan Carroll the same guy? I don't think so. No. He's a fat ass. You're Thank skinny. God. And in <laughs> shape. And you have a good look. Fatty Thank doesn't. You. He's fat. <laughs> so I, I, I really don't get why people keep, I, I don't get it. It's just one of those conspiracy theories that are being thrown around. It is. And I used to be M at one point. It's conspiracy. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, looking back at this past season of COH, as we are coming to a close with Ultimate Glory being next, what, it, what are some of the positives and negatives of this past season like that you, you can reflect back on? Um... Well, not to toot your horn, but you guys made the tag team division. You oh, nice. you and uh, Carol and J2, you know, carried the tag team division. Uh, positives, uh, Patriot had his big moment with winning the title. Uh, let's see, Gorilla Warfare. We had a lot of good CPVs, I, I would say, throughout the whole season. I think we, we can say, we can all agree on that. We had good, solid CPV shows. Yeah. Uh, Raider Rumble was good. Um, even though it was one thing, if I could... Re-edit on that show was a commentary. The commentary, I think, for the Royal Rumble match was a little delayed. I, mm-hmm. I I even mentioned it to you guys when I uploaded. I was like, oh, fuck, I screwed up. But I go through yeah. all the editing again. Um, on the go-home show, I wanted to, uh, my capture card, I couldn't get my capture card to work. I wanted to uh, go over the entire Ultimate Glory card on that show. I didn't get a chance to do that. I wanted to do that. So you guys want to have to wait until I post it on the... Facebook page. When, when you guys know the card mostly anyway, so yeah. I just want you know, just to let everyone else know. Um, I wish a lot. Oh, you said positives. Uh, like I said, yeah. solid shows. Um, the booking not as good as you could say. It's 2013. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did have a few negatives, whether it be on my fault or the talent itself. I still think we had a solid year. Not our best year, but I still think we had a solid season for the most part. And about all the negatives that happened, you know, we'll, we'll 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 dive into that, and I'll give my theory on everything. Okay. Well, one of those n- negatives is from very early on of the season, when uh, at the time Kevin Crisis was World Heavyweight Champion, 
and he was in a storyline with the Alex Enterprise and the Goonie. Goonie going around claiming to be the real world heavyweight champion, which culminated into a triple threat match between the three of them. However, a lot of people looking back at Kevin's title reign, even though Kevin was the world champion, he seemed to just be there to hold the belt while Alex and Goonie fought, and it made him his title reign not come off as well as it probably should have. Yeah, well, in Kevin's, uh, I believe Kevin brought this up. I know he, yeah, he was a transitional champion. I will say that. And Kevin wasn't Kevin wasn't bothered by that at all. He 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 just wanted to be champion. Um, I, I wouldn't say it was just bad timing with Kevin. It was just the story, you know, the whole Goonie and Alex thing. That was that was the hot feud. You know, mm. and right now, like right now, it seems the new hot feud seems to be Patriot and on uh, the Raging Redneck. More people seem to be interested in that than Patriot and Zane, and I can yeah. see why. But as for the whole Kevin thing, uh, I guess in a way, I guess it was just bad timing on his, you know, with him winning the title. The whole Goonie thing happened, um, and who knows? Maybe he'll win it again down the road and make up for that reign. But I'll, I, I'll agree with everyone saying, yeah, it was a weak title run. Yeah. Maybe one day he'll, he'll get the belt again. Now, you, you brought up, uh, things that, excuse me, I'm stumbling, but, one thing that some people are a little critical on is cer- certain guys such as the Great D, such as the Raging Redneck, coming into COH, and, due to their success, say, in CCL, getting a good push right away. Great D, he's in the Pride title match as Fisk at Ultimate Glory, and also Raging Redneck already starting a program with Patriot, which I assume is going to be taking place sometime after Ultimate Glory. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, because there's no doubt in the talent that Great D, and especially Raging Redneck, have. So there's no question that they deserve to be pushed, but which would you take on people saying that it's not fair that they're getting pushed compared to some people that have been there before them that are waiting? Um, well, they're established guys. Two, they have a fan base, especially Razor Redneck. I'll get to him in a bit. But I can see why with the Great D, I think his case is more different than Raging Redneck. Because Razor Redneck has done promos. Great D hasn't. Mm-hmm. And I've asked for promos from the Great D, I, think, I believe, before, maybe a few times. And I never got them. And this time on the Go Home Show, I literally almost had to harass him to get a promo. And when I have to do that from you, especially when you're in a big spot, that's not good. No, it's not. That is not good at all, because you're right, because that spot could have went to another young guy or a mid-card guy wanting that spot. And at times I feel bad, like, oh, man, you know, I did this when I should have done this. I will admit I make mistakes, but every booker makes mistakes. That's how we learn. That's how we get better. Exactly. As for the Raging Redneck, yeah, he's going to feud with Patriot. And I will say this about the Raging Redneck, why he's going to get that spot. I have gained a completely brand new fan base from him. I've gotten messages from people I've never heard from before saying, Hey, I like COH. You know, Raging Redneck got me to watch your guys' show. Keep up the good work. I mean, it's bigger than when Nate was getting his main event push. And then you and Kara and all these other guys started coming in. I mean, it was like that, except bigger. Yeah. I mean, this is the biggest exposure I've ever gotten. And um, and one of my battlegrounds got like 25 likes. I've never gotten so many likes on COH show. So, yeah, you know, it is... He's a big name. Why am I going to devalue a big name like that? True, true. It's kind of like the whole thing of when... WWE brings in a guy like Sting. You're not going to expect Sting. You're not going to go. have Sting feud with Zack Ryder. Yeah, he he's biggest name in WCW. Of course, he's going to be a top guy here. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, one of the guys we, we mentioned was Great D. He's going up against Fisk at Ultimate Glory, and one of the critiques has been about. Fisk and re- and really that Pride title has really gained a reputation as being the Pride title curse. <laughs> it seems as the, yeah, it seems that the last few champions 
things haven't gone too well for them. Yeah, that's true. It, I I don't. Some people are wondering: is it just is it the belt? Is the belt just doing it, or is it they get the belt and then they're not booked strongly? Because Fisk was being booked very strongly going into that winning the Pride title. Lots of people happy, including myself, that Fisk won the belt, and it, it seemed like he was going to be the guy to take the belt to new levels with his undefeated streak. However, things came up, whether it be with Fisk being in the the Accurate Enterprises, being like the bodyguard there, he kind his interest kind of went more towards the group instead of the belt, which kind of devalued the belt and caused Fisk to technically lose, even though he was never pinned matches that he had to, because you couldn't ex- see uh, Fisk being these main event guys yet. Mm-hmm. One thing I wanted to respond to uh, Sonny about was that he didn't like the finish to uh, Morse, to his, his last match on Battleground with the Canadian mm-hmm. Destroyer. One, it's the fucking Canadian Destroyer. No one's going to kick out of that! <laughs> 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 Anyone that takes yeah. that through a table is going to be knocked out. I don't care who you are. Anyone that... I, I, that's one thing I don't like about wrestling. I think PWG is guilty of this. Whoever Yo, kicks out yeah. the Canadian Destroyer, I will fucking hate that match. Same here. Same There's here. just certain moves in wrestling you just cannot get up from. Or kick out. Mm-hmm. Canadian Destroyer being one of those moves. Like I said, I don't care how big you are. Especially you're a big guy. It should, be, it should do more damage. I mean, he took it through an announce table. You're not getting up from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as for the whole Fist thing, uh, I think the only thing the Pride title has done for Fist was that it got him on the battleground. Because he was on yeah. Slam most of his, you know, before the Rumble thing. But uh, let's look at the past Pride champions. Who do we got? You got Master Boo Boo, right? I think he mm-hmm. was first. He, he did good. I thought he did good because he had Johnny with him. Was yeah. his manager? They feuded Rockstone, and then I think he dropped it to. No, I think he dropped it to Rockstone, right? If memory serves me correctly, I believe so. Rockstone, I think Rockstone dropped it to Von Hollywood. Yeah, which I will admit that was a waste of time. And he dropped yes. it automatically at the next show. He dropped it from there to Caleb Blair, who did okay, but even he had a short reign. He couldn't really do much. His reign, you know. He was an okay champ. Yeah, he could have we could have done more with that, but it was Rock but Rockstone was a hot guy, he had to get the belt back. Mm-hmm. Get it back to Rockstone. And then from there Rockstone disappeared. Or this was around the time he started to disappear. And before he disappeared, he wanted to drop the belt at Ultimate Glory to Amir. Mm-hmm. I should have fought it. I will I will take the blame for that. Sometimes I kinda give my the talent a little too much freedom what they want to do. And sometimes mm-hmm. you gotta put your foot down and say, no, no, no. Dropped it from Amir. He did jack shit with it. He dropped it to Fisk. And Fisk took it, the belt, you know, he went to Battleground and he really do, didn't do much with it. And to be honest, he really wasn't given a program, you know, really wasn't getting anyone to, to work with besides the Great D. And with the Great D, he couldn't really do much because of, uh, D just wasn't you know, wasn't there all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. And also, does the does the blame for, for Fist's title reign, is it just on how he was booked, or is it also Fist's fault? Did, did he, like, maybe not do enough no, work? No, it's not. It's or? not Andrew's fault. I'll take the blame for that. Okay. Uh, one guy you mentioned, Rockstone. I, I think there's a lot of people who who are still kind of confused. You said he disappeared. Is that, that he just disappeared yeah, and like, like, left like you hanging? Disappeared. Not only on Such me, but on YWF too. YWF recently just let him go. Wow, it's really a shame because Rockstone was re- really good. Yeah, I think at the beginning everyone was iffy on him. Everyone was iffy on the name itself to his name Rockstone, but uh, it grew mm-hmm. on me. He made it work. Damn, man, he was so he was good, and then he just left. Like, he was, like, he was just gone. And then when I fired him, he gives me, he sends me a picture of him giving the middle finger. Like, really? That's classy. Like, I did all this for you, and that's how you're going to treat me? It, it's, 
that's just not that cool. That wasn't that. I, I was kind of that kind of bothered me a bit. I was like, wow, you know. I and I told him, dude, you gotta be here. I messaged him countless times. If you don't, you know, mm-hmm. if you're not here, then I gotta get rid of you. Because at oh, this point, you're just gonna be in the way. Yeah. Not doing work. Someone else take your spot. Yeah. And his spot got taken, and people forgot about him. And then I had to get rid of him. Would I ever bring him back? I don't know. He would have to. He would really have to prove it to me why he wants to come back. Yeah, if he's going to send you, a, you know, I don't hate him. Flipping you. I mean, off. I'd rather bring him back to bring the other guys. You know who the other guys are. Yeah. Uh now another person who things didn't end too well. Uh, one of them, he, who's also a former Pride champion, who people would say is the reason why some of the things shuffled up for Ultimate Glory is Amir. Now, I know this is this has been addressed, and and I'm sure Amir's going to ask people to still f- follow his Twitter because of it, but I know because you told me, but... His Twitter account's more over than him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what 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 happened with Amir, and why why did you decide to not wait to say Ultimate Glory to finish his program and just get it done? Now? That's the thing. I did not care about him. I didn't care about any program he wanted to do. Why? Well, before two thousand, when did the whole stealing the stealing incident happen? Around summer of twenty fourteen. No, was it twenty? I think twenty thirteen. Thirteen, yeah. Oh yeah, guys, Ryan Carroll's in call for those don't know. <laughs> and so that was over a year ever since. Because before that incident, I've me and Mir have been cool. We've been pretty chill. But ever since that incident happened, I would, they put me in a in a sky. Now I'm gonna tell you the story. They thought that I was stealing from them because of uh my style of editing, the booking. Uh, if you guys remember my battleground, I had a show called Anarchy in the UK. Mm-hmm. They claim that I stole that from their anarchy rules. CPV. Oh, I'm like, oh, come on, really? And uh, no, what led to that was on on a Facebook on a post. Marco Rose leave a post like, uh, "Why do we have the innovators of call?" Oh and yeah, I would, and I then I would that. put like, "Coh, we don't we don't imitate, we innovate." <laughs> like I wasn't making fun, like I was just doing like spinoffs, you know. I was just, I was just yeah. like having fun with him. He got bothered by that. He like legit got pissed off. So I get, I got into a Skype call with him, Chronix, and Amir. Chronix didn't say anything. He was just quiet throughout the whole call. Um, it was just mainly Marco. I, I, I did not understand why Amir was in the call. Cause he was just, I think, I personally think that he was there whispering to Marco's ear. Hey Marco, say this, say that. Cause that's why I feel a lot of the time, a lot of the reasons me and Marco don't, you know, I've always had, some type of beef with each other's because of Amir. Because I felt like Amir was saying things to him that weren't true about me. Or what, you know. Basically being an instigator. Yeah. So base, so we're in that Skype call. And then when I, uh, when we finished the Skype call, I noticed in the, in the comments, um, it was an audio, a recorded audio clip. So... What happened was that they were recording a Skype call without my knowledge, and I had no. Oh wow! And 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 That's Amir, cool. once he noticed it, it was in the uh, the chat, he canceled it because he knew he fucked up, and I saw him. Yeah. And Alex was there in that call too, just in the comments, and he could confirm that. So then, so now I'm finding out uh, they're recording behind my back without even let, telling me that hey, we're recording a Skype call, and they had some title to it too. I think it's called Travis is a liar or something. Hmm. That's and since that day, I've I've never trusted Amir. When I made the decision to put the prize title on him, I was hoping maybe this could be the start of something new for him to get my trust again. But that never happened. Yeah, because he didn't do nothing. Now, oh, I'm not done. That's but oh, okay. <laughs> Continue on. I'm sorry. Um, so so now we're getting to the whole Ultimate Glory thing, you know, with Amir and the Nate, the tag team, um. The tag team idea, what, originally, Amir wanted to face Nate at Ultimate Glory. And right. I really, I wasn't for that idea because they just started teaming up and Amir already wanted to break off, break away from Nate. And I, and I mm-hmm. said, well, that's pretty stupid. 
you just start a team with him already, you want to break away because you realize, oh shit, Ultimate Glory's here, I gotta turn heel. Mm-hmm. And I didn't like the idea. The original idea I had with them was that they were going to co-commentate the show with me, Nate and Amir. Well, originally, I offered them a spot in Money in the Bank. Amir said no, because mm-hmm. he felt he was better than that. Really? So, uh, we, we're going to do commentary, and then they're going to start a program with, with, uh, for the tag team titles leading into next year. That was the plan. Yeah. But, uh, at that point, uh, I knew Amir was always talking shit about me. Behind my back. Especially on Ash. Yeah. It's all there. Mm-hmm. And at that point, an Ultimate Glory ended, and he kept annoying me. When am I gonna get a push? When am I gonna get a push? And he kept wanting me to throw the belt on him. And he went, and it just, I'm like, why is he still here? And like, he was really bumming me out. And I made yeah. a promise to myself, ever since the whole Garnet Court incident happened, don't ever let anyone bum you out, because then you're going to start hate doing COH, because this guy's going to keep coming to you. So I got rid of yeah. him. Yeah. Everyone knew what was going to happen eventually. Oh, it, it was inevitable that it was going to happen. I figured, let me just do it now, just get out of the way, and then I can focus, you know, back to these guys. Back to you guys. Yeah. So it happened, All and right. then... That's it. That's it? All right. Because we got that out there. Now, um, one thing with next season, one of the big things is going to be there's going to be a brand split. C! With C- COH Battleground and Slam. What made you decide that th- this is what you want to do for next season? Well, every season, I always like to do something new, something different. Um, I think after 2012, uh, the first year, 2011, I only did one show a month. The next season after that, I figure I could do two shows every other month. The next year after mm-hmm. that, I figure I could do a weekly show, you know, like a Raw. I do a Battleground. The season after that, let me introduce another show. So we got Battleground and Slam. And mm-hmm. then where do I go from there? Hmm, well, I did use Slam as developmental. And uh, Slam, you know, was eh, was whatever. Uh, it served its purpose being a developmental show. Uh, now I think it's time, since people are familiar with the Slam show, what it is, it's time to make it an official brand. And that's my new thing for next year. Okay. Um, now, there, as of late, there have been some recent releases mm-hmm. from COH. Some of them just had to go. Some of them just, well, they were expendable. Uh, with there being now two brands, do you feel there is enough death on the roster for, for two shows? And if not, are there are there plans to bring new people in to fill the gaps? I think there's enough there. I think we have a lot of Mick Carters um, that feel that aren't getting the appreciation they deserve. Mm-hmm. And I think with the brand split, they can stand out more and they can do more. Plus, mix it in with some new guys, you know, the new movement. Uh, I'm bringing in some old names back, too, from the alumni roster. Stay tuned for that. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit of everything. You know, have some main event guys, you know, on each show, maybe Patreon one, and Max two and the other, some tag teams, Rap Metal here, New Movement there, Eagle there, Mick Carter's mm-hmm. Nitro there, uh, Lester on the other show, TJ here, uh, you know, my brain just went dead. <laughs> so I, and I, th- I think we do. I think right now, we're just doing one show, I just think, it's just, you know, not enough, because everyone, you know, wants to get their spotlight, wants to do more, wants to get more involved, you know? And I can only do so much, you know, with the big roster, with just, like, one show. We're only doing, like, one big brand, you know? And especially if people want to yeah. say, I want to win a title, I want to win a title, when this other guy just won a title, and he can't have a, really have a reign, because these other eight guys want to have a title. Gotta wait in line. Yeah, it's just a line, and some people, I think, are very impatient and waiting. Yeah. Um, now, with before we, you know, we get to the the brands, but we still have Ultimate Glory, and there's ups and downs as they're going to be for every show. Uh, I just recently got submitted a question: five guys you've been impressed and disappointed in this build Ultimate Glory. Now, f- it's on the fly, so I don't expect you to just have five guys, but just a few guys that you've been really impressed with. Maybe a few guys you've been disappointed with. Uh, I disappointed. Well, for one, I think we all add great deeds to the list. Yeah. Um, 
Justin, uh, I want to, he didn't have a webcam, so there was really no way for him to cut promos. Mm-hmm. I do wish he would have left more comments on the page, at least, you know, to acknowledge Guerrero. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so that's two. Um, I'm looking at the card right now. I, I guess Rap Metal, in a way. I definitely agree. Yeah, I think, I, you know, so, do you want to count those two for four? Yeah, th- those those count as four. Uh, yeah. and really, that's, I'm looking at who else is on the card. And really, I, I can't name five, I can name four. Oh, it's Zane! Okay. Five. Ah. There you go. Any guys that in particular that really stood out in this build to Ultimate Glory? Uh, well, as a lot of people really want M. Accuracy and Alex to headline the show, so I mm-hmm. think those guys stood out, you know, just for that, you know, for that alone. You know, they're turning their main event feud into the actual main event. Um, stood out. Uh, Nitro. I think Nitro and Cop- Copeland's been doing good. I think over these past few shows. I mean, it's his retirement oh, yeah. tour. I think him and Nitro have been doing doing some good back and forth stuff. Same with um, AJ and Blair. Um, uh, Phoenix and Kevin too. And I know that's more than five. Uh, they're doing good. Work. Even Young Blood cut a promo on the last show. I gotta thank uh, Benz for that because he told him, you know, you should cut a promo. That's good. Everyone helping each other yeah, out. Yeah, that's good. I mean, obviously, you know, you guys, uh, ego, you guys, you know, been doing what you do. So, yeah, I know that's more than five. So, there you go. Oh, more credit. Uh, now, one of the... Two, two of the people you, you talked about that... Not really impressing you, but disappointing you... Have been Rap Metal. And I know in my last interview with Sonny... Sonny and me were pretty brutal to the point of... What we thought of how Rap Metal has been performing lately. So... What's your take on on their performance and people's reactions to it? Uh, I think people are overreacting a little bit. Yeah, I you know I wish they could have done a little more, but I'm not completely I'm not disappointed at them. I mean, even Levi complained to me the other day saying that he was pissed off that people were pissed off at him about you know how he feels he's not putting in enough, mm-hmm. and I was happy he was pissed off. I was like, oh yeah, this guy cares. Yeah, it's good. It's, he, sh- he should care, and uh, and unhopefully for Levi, uh, this causes him for for the future to not give people any reason to think, oh well, he's not really putting in work. Because I mean, I know for one of my things was maybe not even a problem, with just a, a comment on the Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, uh, Ryan Carroll. Uh, no, yeah, you can't. Yeah, we're going to phone in. You cannot. <laughs> Wait till you get interviewed, then you can complain. This is my show, bitch. Yeah, Carol, you can have your comments on a future episode, because I know you have your shit to yeah, say. Yeah, so we'll save that for your show. This is my show. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, if anything, it's really, I wish Austin would have got more involved. Not much, not so much Levi. Because I, 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 I did ask, you know, for promos from Austin, and he never sent them to me. He was supposed to be mm-hmm. talk on the last Battleground, but I never got that. I fig- But I figured out I got Levi, so, you know, like, that's enough. Yeah. And hopefully for the both of them, uh, they do that, because Levi do more work. And hopefully Austin, too, because Austin is good at promos, so i love to see him do some more. I mean, just because you don't send in a promo for a show doesn't mean you're getting deep pushed. I mean, I've had this. This isn't nothing new. I had this all the time. There were shows that Kevin didn't send a promo. There were shows that Nate didn't send a promo. There were shows that Goonie didn't send in a promo. Bateman. Countless guys. So, just point that yeah. out. Now, obviously, that's not going to get anyone push, but let's talk about someone who has been getting pushed. In fact, it was my last guest, Lester Barkley. He's been he's been you know picking up some steam lately. He's has he has a lot of fans that have been vocal on whether it be Ask FM or other uh, Call Wrestling Illustrated pages or whatever. They're very very heavy behind Lester, which and we've seen it develop into COH and where Lester is winning these matches. Doing very well for himself. However, there are some guys who feel Lester is being forced down people's throats. Including you. Yeah, including me. 
Sorry, Sonny, but you already know that. Um, forced down, forced down our throats because of his support and because of like the extra stuff he does, which the extra stuff is awesome. But some people feel, whereas a guy like a Kenyon Phoenix or a guy like an AJ Young may not be doing slam commentary or cutting better promos and doing keeping more people interested from the COH fan base and they're not maybe getting the same uh, fast push that Lester is. Well, for one, if you ever want to do commentary, let me know. Uh, Kenny did commentary. He yeah. Acts, and he, he got to do an episode of Slam with, uh, with uh, uh, Sonny. Mm-hmm. But Sonny has done a lot for me, and I, I thanked him before, you know, before I'm going to thank him again. Thank you, Sonny, for doing everything. Say, so Sonny is very loyal to me. And yeah, when you're very loyal to me, yeah, you can kind of see it a bit on the shows. Mm-hmm. But um, is he being overpushed? Uh, I think his feedback's a little too much. Cause I, 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 th- I, Sonny, I love you, but I do think he's a little overhype. I, I, I don't I think agree. he's ready to carry the company yet. Oh. Hey, but he has potential because he's he's getting there. But I think he needs a mid car run first. I still mm-hmm. think he needs that one big mid car feud or a mid car title. You know in order to take that next step. But he's getting there. Yeah, he's, he's getting there. He de- I've seen people, and we all know who they are, on, on Ask FM, who... A- who will s- I've seen people say, like, oh, so- Sonny cut the best promo on the show where Alex has this big promo with some accuracy, and I'm like, I don't see it. I don't know. I no, don't know if they Sonny. watch the shows just to see Sonny. Maybe they do. And they don't, and they, well, and they only gotta see Sonny, skip everything else. Best. And yeah. if they do, I mean, you're really missing basically yeah, everything so, so to the cake. More. You're just only seeing a piece of it. Mm-hmm. Now, he, he's got some good direction going on. Are there guys in COH right now that you're feeling really lacking direction? They're not really doing, they're just kind of there. Oh, Great D's kind of there. Yeah. Um, Morris is kind of there, I think as a singles guy, but I think as a tag team, he'll be fine with Kevin. Future Flight. Future Flight, yeah. Uh, Goonie and Nate, uh, they're just starting their program. Hasn't been explained yet. Again, fans, stay tuned. Re- you know, I'm going to get there. Relax. <laughs> uh, let's see. Kevin's in a program with, uh, Canyon. I think this feud could really help Canyon, you know, because I know Sonny mentioned that, uh, Canyon's, uh, push has really been all that great. He's never really gotten that big win, which he's he is right. Oh, that's gonna change. Uh, anyone else that's directionless? Uh, Nitro's in a good program, I guess. Yeah. Fisk. Mm-hmm. I think I think yeah. you know we we covered this, but um, after Glory, he's gonna get a new direction. He's gonna be fresh. You know, I'm taking some people's advice. Um. I, I, I think everyone's doing good. I mean, the main guys, everyone that's booked on the show. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're looking like, what about the Amazing Punk? What, what about him? <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, let's go to some more uh, fan questions. What do you think is the best COA show you've ever booked, top to bottom? Best. The best show I have ever booked. Hmm. It's a good one. Let's see, uh, I'm gonna think, think this one through. I'm just trying to think of every show. Uh, well, Anniversary 3 was very well received. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a very well done show. I think a lot, I think a lot of people, you know, were happy that the right people won. Nacho had his moment, Patriot especially. Um, I thought Honor to Society was a damn good show. Yeah. Come on, you put away Garnet Court. It doesn't get any better than that. Was that was great. Through a flaming great table, moment. yeah. My Iron Society was a fun show. Um, ready to Rumble um, from Season 3 with uh, Goonie winning the title. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a great show. I love that. Uh, Summerfest, where uh, uh, you guys dropped the bells to Yesbeard. And uh, the mm-hmm. Goonie, not Goonie, uh, Alex and uh, Zane had their Hell in a Cell. It's just, just a lot, a lot of good stuff. Even, I mean, if I was to include some battlegrounds, I guess a lot of people like the Anarchy in the UK. Then let me do another one. And we'll probably do another one next year. 
Uh, the uh, Battleground. Oh, uh, Outbreak 2. I mean, at least the ending, the whole OBN thing, people love that. Oh, yeah, it's one of the most talked about endings of COH ever. Yeah, that was, that was heavily inspired by SWA, that ending. Hmm. Uh, are there any particular storylines that you're very proud of, like the best ones that you've done? Uh, the Akron Enterprise versus uh, Zane LaFontaine. Mm-hmm. That was great. Uh, OBN versus COH. I still oh, yeah. thought that was great stuff. I mean, I, the group ended at the perfect time. It was just when it was starting to get stale, it ended. Mm-hmm. So it ended at the right time, so I thought that was good. Um, even, you know, Scott As versus Danny Mars, I thought was a great mid-card feud. Yeah, I really, was a good I really felt feud. they helped elevate the internet title. It was just what the title needed. And, you know, Copeland got involved, Rudo got involved, and, you know, it changed it up a bit, but then it went right back to the main two guys, and they concluded in the Ironman match. A match that I'll never book again, because I, cause playing for 30 minutes, that's a pain. Oh my god, I know. Um, I mean, there's gotta be other stuff I'm proud of. Uh, I'm Accuracy and Bateman was the first real feud I've ever done, I've mm-hmm. ever booked. Uh, and one of Steve's personal favorite feuds he's ever done in Call, so that's pretty cool. Um, any other feuds? There's probably a lot uh, others. I wish I would have done more with your feud with Blair. I yeah, I, w- I wish we got to do Yeah, that. I felt like we could have done more there, but we got the brand split. We could always continue. Yeah. Um, any others? I think that's it. That's all I can think of for now. At least the ones that really stand out to me. Okay. Uh, now we, we had those fun questions. Let's go to an, int- an interesting one. Recently, on the COH Facebook page, one individual by the name of Scott Adams, made some interesting comments towards AJ Young, towards Kenyon Phoenix, that while I've heard that he was apparently trying to be in character, kind of blurred the lines from in and out of character and seemed to be personal attacks, especially on AJ's part, mentioning personal things with AJ, such as IHOP and stuff like that from months ago that, serves nothing to his character. What, what's your take on Scott doing that? I thought, yeah, I, I, I'm I, on the boat with everyone else. I thought that was pretty stupid. Unless he got mm-hmm. approval from AJ that he could say those type of comments. He didn't. He, I, don't, I thought that was stupid. I, I don't like people using the race. Because I kind of feel that should mm-hmm. take, that's just going taking the easy way out of trying to be a heel. And yeah. if Scott was in character, I wish he would have said he would have made out of character. Don't take my comments serious, you know? And then he goes back in character and says those things. But even if he wants to say some racial things, he's still got to get approval from AJ. You yeah. don't know how he's going to react to that. Well, I know AJ was not and a Yeah, he, was not he a messaged fan of that. me saying he wasn't happy about that. So, so mm-hmm. that nice guy, yeah, he needs to uh, watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, now... On the last on the last episode, I had I had Sonny on, and he made an interesting comment that I don't know if everyone would agree with. I don't think you would, but let, let's see. He made a comment when talking about YWF and and COH and their booking, and YWF has often been criticized in the past about their booking and directions they take. And he made a comment basically saying that he felt they were they had more direction than COH does. Do you think there's any truth to that, or do you think that's far from the truth? Well, I don't know what their direction is. I don't know what it is either. I don't. I don't watch. I don't. I, I don't watch you that much either. I haven't been keeping up with it, so I I can't really con- give you an answer. All I mean, right. I mean, right. I mean, are they still doing the generation feud? I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah. So I mean, they basically been. Yeah, they're still doing what you know they've always been doing. Seems to be the direction. I don't. I don't know where they're going. I. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't watch their. I haven't watched their recent stuff. Uh, question. But if Sonny feels that way, you know. Okay. Yeah, if that's what, that's what Sonny feels. I'm not saying that everyone has to agree with it. I don't. Um, because I don't know how Marco this, does things now. When you know, when I was with them, you know, things were weren't the greatest. Not at all. I mean, there's a reason. You know, why me and Kevin ended up quitting. But uh, hopefully he's changed now, because Sonny really seemed like, you know, he's a really cool guy. And Marco is cool. As a person, he's yeah. cool. I like him. Even with Chronix. Even though I, I thought me and Chronix had beef at one point, 
I messaged him not about a month ago, asking if he saw beef with me. He's like, no, no. So I, I assume I'm assume we're all still cool, but I don't know how he is today as a booker. Maybe he listens to his guys now. I don't know. I'm not there. So, but there's no, at least from what you know, there's no beef, no heat between you and Marco and Chronix, YWF and COH. They're on good terms. Good terms. Yeah. Okay, that that's good because I know there's a lot of speculation a while ago that things weren't so great. Yeah, now, now that's me, Marco, and Chronics. Me and Amir, uh, I don't know. Not so, not much. so much. Not on my part, more on Amir's part. He really has a grudge against me. Oh yeah. Um, some interesting fan questions. First of all, uh, oh, did you watch Cyber Slam? No. Which one? No. <laughs> well. If it's the YWF one, I wouldn't watch uh, that. If it's the AWF one, you should, you I, I have seen uh, both shows, YWF and AWF. Cyberslam was a while ago, so. Yeah. Uh, a question. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kenny Phoenix, a.k.a. Adam, throwing away Drake, J. Crack's cookies? Come on, man. You're, you're better cookies. than that, Ad. Cook Cookies! There are some things you just don't do. How, how could you throw those cookies away? And I, I think know. people wanted him pushed. I know. People, they don't know the horrible man he really is. Unbelievable. Throwing away cookies. Kids Nefco would die to have those cookies. <laughs> uh, question for, for, for me. Uh, from, reading to, from me to you. What, what, what did you think of the Egotistical Bastards crap metal promo? Um, I thought that was pretty funny. I liked it. I wasn't sure how. The only thing I was iffy about was how Levi was going to react to it. Especially mm-hmm. when I uh, post a picture of them, him and Austin kissing. <laughs> you guys made like a while a while back. I made yeah, I made that a while ago. And I was uh, I was the only thing I was iffy about. I liked it. I just wasn't sure how Levi was going to like it. But he seemed to he he said he loved the show, so I'm assuming he liked it. Yeah. Good sport about it. Yeah, that's one thing. Levi's a very chill guy. That's why I can never, you know, I've never mean Levi. We've never had any beef. He's a very chill guy. He'll do anything, you know, whatever you tell him to do. He's a very loyal guy, whether it be to me, to Marco. He's very loyal. All right. Uh, we'll do uh, one, one last question before we go to name association. How much longer do you plan on doing COH? Well, I'm obviously going to do next season. Yeah. After that, I don't know. So one more season is guaranteed, and after that's in question? Yeah. Okay. So a lot of things in my uh, personal life, you know, are picking up. Uh, I got bills to mm-hmm. pay now. I have my own car. I'm going to have car insurance to pay soon. I work. I'm just trying to get myself out there more, you know? Yeah, l- life goes on. Mm-hmm. All right, now let's finish off with a bit of name association. All right, uh, first one. Guy who has some interesting things to say about you, Lester Barkley. Love him. Uh, Ryan Carroll. He's fat. Fat he is. Uh, Scott Adams. uh, Scott's a very cool guy. You just got to watch what he says, but he does a lot. Scott, like Sonny, does a lot for me. He's made the new logos for Battleground and Slam. He's currently making a Ultimate Glory 3 uh, 4 poster, so stay tuned for that. Very chill guy, uh, very loyal. Yeah, very loyal guy. Um, Daniel Mars. Uh, he's okay. <laughs> uh, he says a lot of things that really makes me want to shoot myself. Yeah. Um, he, there's a lot of things he does. I'm like, why do you do these things? But um, he just... But he's never done anything to me personally. Mm-hmm. But again, Mars, he's been very loyal to me, very loyal to COH, and, uh, you know, I like him for that. Fisk. Kill Kid. I gotta, I gotta talk to Andrew more. Um, uh, there's been, there's been some speculation going around that he doesn't speak up much. Uh, that's what, uh, and I'll say this, that's what Sonny said, and I've been hearing from a couple people, I'm not gonna throw any names, but a couple people have, have agreed with, with Andrew not speaking up, and, I'll, and I'm going to talk to to Andrew about that because if, if he he does have a tendency to 
to have some opinions, but not want to... Not want to speak, speak up. up yeah, for, yeah, he's afraid to get in yeah, trouble. Yeah, for those, I think I'm going to, like, be mad at you. No, I mean, unless you curse me out and say F you to me, then I'm going to be mad at you. But if you have your yeah. opinion on anything, whether it be storyline ideas, you want to do something different, let me know. You know me, John. I'll, I'll listen. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, Sonny just did an hour-long thing criticizing... Your stuff. You don't hate Sonny. Not at all. I like him for being honest. Honesty. Trust me, the only thing that's the only thing that's more fake in this world than wrestling are people. Yeah. Uh The Alex Enterprise. I love Alex. Um actually before the whole COH thing started, me and Alex really didn't have the greatest relationship because of my fallout with uh the girls and how that happened, but the good thing about COG is that I think it helped build a stronger relationship between me and Alex and a lot of other guys, too. So I think that's one of the positives of my main, the main big positive of having COG is that I was able to build up better friendships with a lot of people, including you guys. We're, we're happy to be your friend. Uh, ooh, here's an interesting one. Garnet Court, Christian Gary. I don't hate him anymore. Not like what I used to. I just don't care for him. There's just nothing. Yeah, it's I nothing think... he can say or do that's going to make me care. He can say whatever he wants. Just, I think most people are at the point they don't care. Yeah, anymore. he already had his run where everyone was bashing him when he first got fired. He was bashing everyone. That's over. Uh here's one that may even be a little bit more interesting than Garnet Court. That being our good old buddy, Shart. Fun story, he went to the car, he messaged me the other day and wanted to come back. Did he really? Yes. <laughs> after all that, after complaining and everything, he still wanted to come back. He, uh, he messaged me saying, he says, Travis, it's been six months, can I come back? <laughs> and I thought about it, I even asked Jay, I said, Jay, should I bring him back? I asked, uh, Kayla Blair, I asked Steve, and they all said, well, Jace, I can't remember what Jace, I think he said no. But I know Blair and Steve said... If he's, you know, if he's chill, you know, bring him back that. Basically, he deserves a second chance. Mm-hmm. And I was going to give it to him. I was actually going to bring him back next season. But then he said, oh, I'll have a 2K14. Oh, well, you can't come back. <laughs> that's so sad. Yeah, that's that's basically Shart. The whole, that's basically it. But besides that, and, uh, Shart as a person, uh, he's kind of, he's weird. He's a weird fella. But again, yeah, I don't hate I, him. I really don't hate anyone. Except Peter Gilmore, because that guy's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go with uh, Kevin. Kevin Cross. One of my best friends. I knew him. We went to high school together. I actually got him in the call. Yeah. So Good thing you did that, because he's awesome. Yeah, Kevin's a great guy. He loves anime. He watches a lot of Japanese movies. He's the ultimate Japanese freak. I'll tell you anything. He watches New Japan. Uh, he's Kevin's a very chill guy. I gotta visit him in Philly. I know he lives in Philly now. Be cool to see. Uh, now, what about Justin Bateman? Very cool guy. I love Justin. I love that he, this this last season he's been instead of competing in the world title picture, he's been really helping people, whether they were people who deserved it or not. Uh, not to get into anything, but he really t- went out of his way to go help some of the younger and newer guys out. Yep, and he's and uh, he looks like he's he recently got a webcam again, so it looks like he's going to be back, you know, cutting promos again, which is great. Uh, I don't have any plans for him yet next season, but I have a, but I, I, I I know what brand he's going to go on. I just got to find mm-hmm. some plans for him to do. Cause I still want to keep Justin around. I still feel he has a lot more to offer. Who knows? Maybe another title run. Could be. But yeah, this season he wanted to spend it helping a lot of the young guys, and he was very pissed off when the whole uh, Nathan Roberts debacle, debacle happened. Now, that's the only thing, yeah, Justin can can take things a little too serious. That's the only thing about mm-hmm. Justin, but, beside, but, but you know, he was legit pissed with Nathan Roberts because he felt like he wasted his time trying to help when Roberts didn't do nothing. Yeah. So, uh, he, I, in a way, I saw why he was angry. Alright, uh, Amir. He's whatever. I don't care for him. All right. Uh, 
Steve, a.k.a. Accuracy. Oh, Steve, another great guy. I love Steve. I, you know, I always go to him for advice. He's like one of my top three guys I go to when it comes to booking advice. You know, where should I go with this? Or me? Or basically, I just need someone to talk to. Just want to say hi, you know? That's yeah. Steve! And... Continue on. Sorry. Oh, that's it. I'm done. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and last, certainly not least, the Honor Rumble winner, Zayma Fontaine. Stu's a very cool guy. I love Stu. Um, I don't. I I don't want to give away too much. Well, I I won't say nothing. I don't want to spoil what happens. Okay. All right. We'll we'll, we'll see what happens in uh, I guess at Ultimate Glory and and beyond. Yep, guys. Ultimate Glory Four is coming soon. Um, I haven't started recording any matches. Well, I only have one match recorded. I still have to edit a lot more tires for people. Mm-hmm. Um, I still need. I'm still getting in another Titantron for someone because a lot of people are doing Titantrons for CPVs now. It seems to be a new yeah. thing now. Everyone wants uh, Titantrons, and they want like a special entrance for when it comes to CPVs. And freaking Alex spoiled everyone with that. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't wait to see Ultimate Glory for and see how how things develop. What? Let's see how the story develops. I know I've been critical and other people have been critical of how things have gotten there but i know basically that i do also do my own show sometimes you just gotta wait and see what happens and that's what I'll, that's what i'll do and i hope everyone else does the same wait and see what happens you may just like it mm-hmm and that's, that's, so i like to think that's basically my advice is going in with the whole goonie just wait and see what happens the story hasn't been told yet you're just going by what you saw when you know when it happened Without really, you, yeah. you can't judge the whole, because the whole thing hasn't happened yet, so you can't really judge it all. We're just on the first page of the book. Yeah. Alright, I'd like to thank you, Travis, for c- coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, Is there anything else you guys want to cover while I'm here? Uh, not that not that I know. Is there anything you, you want to say, whether it be in response to something Sonny said, or that you've seen people say... Uh, in regard, let's see. We covered Slam. I mentioned that the brand ran its course. Uh, one thing, you know, I may take up Sonny's advice on this. I may have a booking team next year. Hmm. I'm not sure how I'm going to do. It. I'm not sure if I'm going to have it. You know, a group for Battleground and one group for Slam, or just one whole booking team as a whole. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but it seems like maybe I'm not. I want to. I don't want to say I'm running out of ideas. But I did, I promised myself when I first started call, when I first was going to get in COH, don't exhaust yourself. Pace yourself. Don't ever feel like you're getting exhausted. Am mm-hmm. I exhausted? Does it seem like, you know, my ideas maybe weren't as great as they once were, let's say, during the OBN? I don't, I'll let people be the judge of that. But uh, maybe it's time for new, fresh minds to be, to help book COH and maybe take it to the next level. Especially with the brand split coming up. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. All right. I can't wait to see what happens. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. No problem. Best of luck with Ultimate Glory. Thank you. And best of luck to Jay Crack for uh, Call All Stars. <laughs> yeah, let's go Jay Crack. Let's see if he can win the whole thing. And that about wraps it up. Again, I'd like to thank Travis for coming on the show. It's a hell of an interview. I'm glad he he came on, addressed some of the remarks that Sonny made, addressed some of the criticisms about recent bookings and Ultimate Glory 4. And Ultimate Glory 4, don't forget, is coming up. Regardless of some of the criticisms that myself, Sonny, and others have made, Ultimate Glory 4 should still be a, a good show to watch. And it'll be interesting to see what happens. Because like Travis says, you, you got to wait and see what happens. And I know that more th- more than maybe someone else because I run my own show with the AWF. So I know you just got to wait to see what happens. So I understand what Travis is coming from when he says that. I've had stories before where some people at first were like, I don't know, man. But after when you see the end result, you're like, you got me. It was a smart idea. So let's see what this end result is. Let's see what happens at Ultimate Glory 4. It still should be an interesting show. There's still some unpredictable matches. Let's let's find out what's going to happen at Ultimate Glory. I can't wait for it. Plus, I'm on the show. I'm defending the tag team titles. That's already a reason to watch the show. 
But again, not to be egotistical. Thank I'd like to thank all of you for watching the show. Again, it's been an awesome experience. We're already two episodes in. And I can't wait for so much more. I have so many more interviews planned. I've recorded some interviews. It's going to be a blast. Who's next? That being COH's Kenyon Phoenix, also known as Rave, also known as uh, Adam Jackpot. He's going to be on the show. And this is going to be an interesting one because it's going to be the first guy I'm going to have on the show that is not just going to talk about COH. Yeah, he's going to talk about Kenny Phoenix, and he's going to talk about what's going on in COH for him, but most of the interview isn't about COH, which is going to be great for some of the fans out there who aren't necessarily big COH fans, but fans of our th- other shows. Kenny Phoenix, or Adam as I know him as. Adam's a, a big fan of Call Wrestling. He's been a fan for many, many years. Even fans back to the fantasy days of Call. Uh, he's a Call buff. He knows a lot of things about Call Wrestling. So, if you're into that, if you've been a fan for many years, you're going to love it. And if you're a fan who's... Even if you're a newer fan, I really think you should check it out because it's a great interview. You learn a lot from Call. It's just an overall fun interview, at least for me. I think you're all going to enjoy it. I know I did. But we'll see that next time. Again, I'd like to thank Travis for coming on. I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for watching. And I'll see you on the next one. Can't wait to be to sit down with Canyon Phoenix. And then also, fuck Seth Drago.